All right, hello my children. So what I'm gonna show you guys how to do today is how to create a first person controller that allows you to climb on ledges, just like so. Um, allow you to crouch up and down, lean left and right, as well as go under objects like this for when they're too low for you to um, go under uh, while you're standing. So it's gonna just allow you to toggle back and forth between two different collision shapes and I think that's about it. Um, this is going to be about an intermediate uh, lesson, so if you don't know the basics of Godot or coding or anything like that, um, this one is not going to be for you. <laughs> Just fair warning, you might be lost. But um, yeah, um, without further ado, let's get started, because I'm going to blow through this extremely quickly. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new scene. Or better yet, let me get rid of the player that's in here because we're going to give ourselves a brand new one. Okay, save that. And then after that, we're going to open up a new uh, tab here for a new scene. Get ourselves a brand new node. We'll do, whoops, a character body 3D. This is just going to allow us to get basic movement. Um, then it's going to ask you for some collision shapes, so we're going to get one, and I don't know, I'm just going to duplicate that. This one will be for our standing collision, so it's going to register when we're standing. And this one's going to be for our crouching collision, and that's going to be registering our crouching. So once those are set up, come over here. I'm going to choose a capsule for the standing, and I'm going to choose a sphere for the crouching. And then I'm just gonna put that right to the base here. And like I said, all it's gonna do is allow us to toggle between those two collisions. I'm just gonna save this, call it player. And then let's get ourselves a brand new script. So I'm just gonna use the, uh, the default template for basic movement. Um, it comes pre-installed with uh, Godot 4. So we're just gonna use that. So let me just explain this code here but first i want to actually set this in its own little function and then i need to pass in the delta because this stuff is using it i'm just going to take all this code right here control x and then control v and then we can go up here and then delta and the only reason why i'm doing this is just to keep this particular function the pro physics process um clean that's the only reason why i moved it okay now to explain what this thing is doing um here as it says here is just adding gravity so if we ever leave the ground um, then it's going to push us down until we meet the ground um, here is just an input to handle our jump which they already increased or they already gave us some variables such as our speed and our jump velocity um, i'm actually going to change these to variables and the reason being let's go to speed and i'm just going to replace all and same thing with this. I'm going to change that to jump velocity and replace all. Um, the reason why I'm going to change this from constants to variables is because I'm going to be, I want to be able to manipulate these later on. Um, and then it also had given us a variable for our gravity. Uh, so, so that anyway, that's what the jump is doing. Um, and then down here, it's creating a variable that's getting our input vector, which is um, anytime we press a key. Um, and then it's going to um, translate that into a direction for us. And then it's going to have pretty much a Boolean here. Um, if direction isn't equal to zero, meaning we're pressing a direction, um, it's just going to change our velocity to that direction. And then here is if we're not pressing anything, if we have any other um, forces such as gravity, it's going to send us in that direction um, as well. Now I'm going to change these. And the reason why I changed these is because I want to use the WASD keys versus the arrow keys. Okay, and that explains essentially what the control loop is doing. Loop, and add a new function, head, control, and essentially this is just going to control the camera. Now I need to get the variables for this, as well as add a camera. So let's just do that very quickly. Action. Again, later later on, I'll be able to uh, call these variables and toggle in between the crouch collision or the standing collision. 
and then we'll be able to crawl. All right, so that should take care of that. And I need to add a camera. So let's add that right now. Camera 3D. Um, actually, before we even add the camera, we need to add one more thing, and that is a node 3D. Um, this is gonna allow the camera to pivot once we start adding animations. Things get kind of weird once you, if you have the camera direct, if you have the camera being controlled directly, things get kind of wonky. So that's just to avoid that. And then I need a variable for that. Uh, oh no, no, it doesn't. Okay, all right, we need to create a ready function here. Function ready. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to capture our mouse input. Um, there is a useful function in here called in the input. Um, I don't know what the hell this is. The input class that allows us to get the mouse and then allows us to capture the mouse. So all we're doing right here is just capturing the mouse and placing it into the center. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's what's happening right now. So let's yeah, so that's what it's doing. So all it's doing is capturing our mouse here and slamming it right in the middle of our screen. And then with the head control here, it's just saying if we ever hit cancel, um, it's going to allow us to unlock our mouse. Now, the, uh, yeah, unlock our mouse. That way we can um, move it outside of this. And I'll show you exactly why that's important. So I just I guess I have to call the damn thing first. Now, now, don't I? All right, let's try that again. Now with 100% less. There we go. Okay, so as you can see here, my cam my mouse has disappeared. I, you can't see it, which is good because that means it's being forced into the center. If I hit the escape button, you can see it flickers on and off. And this will allow us to uh, just hit the escape button. So that's all this is doing. All right, next we need to get um, the input function. So let's create that right now. And this is gonna get the input for our mouse. This is gonna allow us to look around. Okay, I don't have any mouse sensitivity. So we're gonna create that right now. Here. Whoops, we just need one. Oh yeah, that's right. I need to add this character, this player, to the scene. That way we can actually see what the hell's going on. We should be able to see some things. I swear. Okay. Okay, as you can see here, we are able to go back and forth, and our mouse and head are controlling perfectly. So. I hope you're following along so far. <laughs> so there you go. So this code here, all it's doing is saying, if the event is an input event mouse motion, I want to do these things. So I need it to rotate on the Y axis um, the, the opposite of the X. So in this case, it's going to go to the left. And then it's going to times the, um, it's going to multiply by the uh, mouse sensitivity. So that's just controlling the speed. And then here, the camera pivot, which is that 3D node that we have here, is going to rotate that on the X axis, and it's going to do the opposite of the Y. So this one is going to be up and down. And then it's going to multiply that by the mouse sensitivity. Now the reason why I it's going um, in the in minus, if I remember correctly, is because um, I'm just gonna hit that there. Yeah, is because it, it does it opposite for whatever reason. So right here, you can see I'm going to the right, but I'm moving left. And if I go to the left, my head is moving to the right. So this is just to make sure that this is um, going in the right directions. And then here, um, let's see, it keeps camera from being able to 360. Okay, this is just to clamp it down. So this rotation here is just to take the rotation of our pivot, and then it's just dividing it by pi. Um, and this is just gonna make sure that it can never 360. So if it ever reaches uh, 360 going up or down, I can't, I, I eventually I'll clip. As you can see here, I can't go any further up. 
can't go any further down uh, while looking. I get locked in. So that's all that's doing. It's just making sure that we can't spin around um, on the y-axis anyway. All right, so we're not quite done with the input function just yet. Um, I want to be able to add a way to toggle in between whether we're, whether we're crouching or not. So let's do that right now. So first things first I'm going to do is create a new function, and I'm going to call it and I believe this is going to need an event because we're going to be calling this in the input function. I'm just going to pass this for now. If event dot is action pressed crouch. Oh, yeah, we have it. We are going to take these here and we're going to um, toggle them on or off. So we're just going to go check crouch state and then we do not need the event state actually. Silly goose me. Okay. We don't need that. So now that we have our uh, check crouch for state and we have an input for that, um, we need to add um, a variable is crouching up here false. So all this is going to do is just to make sure that when we start the game that the player is uh, standing and we have a way to tell the script whether we're standing or not. So here we're just asking is crouching. So are we crouching? And then false being no. So this is a boolean. It's going to be either be true or false. And then down here, what I need to happen is, um, give me a second, toggle in between these. So all this is doing is it's going to check the state. And whatever the, the, this Boolean is, is just going to create the opposite of it whenever we press the, the crouch button. So essentially, um, if is crouching is equal to true, then if we press it, it's going to equal to false and vice versa. And then... What I need to do is I need to grab these collision shapes up here and I need to tell them if they're going to be disabled or not. So let's get the standing crouching. Right? So yeah, that's the way I had it. So all this is doing is um, it's just finding out which state we're in, whether we're standing or crouching, and depending on what state that is, it's going to disable that collision shape for us. So if we go back and we hit this, if I am correct, we should be able to get under here now. Yep, beautiful by crouching. Now, obviously, I haven't added the uh, crouch animation, so we just kind of glide under there. But yeah, for the most part, we can now go under those things. Okay, man, we are moving super fast here. Might have to change the speed, but anyway. Okay, and that's how we do our little crouchy crouch. All right, next thing up. So the run state's super, super easy. I'm gonna change our speed here, though, to like one because we are just way too fast. And then the next thing I need to do is create a run state. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to here. It's actually going to be super easy as well, super fast. And all we're going to do is say if, again, I've, uh, this is a custom thing input, so you can do it yourself. And I'm just going to say speed and then two, one. And then that should allow us to run yeah, beautiful. Okay, so here comes the fun part. We're gonna have to do some mantling uh, or how to climb. What we're gonna do here, let's go to the character and I'm gonna add another node to 3D. And this is gonna allow me to group all the raycast together. So let's get ourselves a raycast 3D. And all this is gonna do is allow us to detect if we're if we ever run into a wall. So I'm, gonna add, I'm just gonna add three, so. So this one should be addition. Okay. So what I'm gonna do with the one that's at the top, I'm gonna put this one at the top of the player's head. I'm gonna rotate this as well. There we go. This here, same thing. And then this here is gonna be the new position. Actually, we'll do that right now. It looks like, and that's going to be where we're going to end up. So we're going to make this a bit smaller as well, right about there. Okay. Okay. So just make sure you have your things set up like so. Oh, wait. It looks like I fudged up just a little bit. Um, these need to be the same direction that we're facing. So 90 degrees. And then this other one here. Make sure it's lined up. 
like so, and then we need it to be like that. That will give us our new position. Okay. What Raycast do is they detect whether there's a collision or not. And in our case, if there's a collision with this node right here, or this Raycast, this smaller one, um, then it knows that we're up against the wall. And then this one right here is gonna figure out if it's a ledge or not. So if this one is also colliding, then we're at a wall. But if it's, if it, this one is not colliding, but this one is, then we know that we're at a ledge. So that's exactly how this is gonna work. And then this um, one right over here is, um, once we grab the ledge, we need a new position to jump to. Um, so that's all that's gonna be doing for us. Okay, so now let's get into coding this stuff. So I need, and then this one's gonna be, where is gonna be new position. Okay. Okay, so now that we got those variables set up, we can start doing our mantling system. Okay, so we're gonna have a check mantle, and then we're gonna create a new function for that. Okay, so, so we have check mantle here. I made a new function here. Then I created a brand new variable called has ledge, and all it's gonna do is it's gonna check our raycast here. So I have a variable called face level. It's getting the raycast of face. And it's saying if that's colliding and the top head isn't, which is this one here, like I was explaining earlier. So if this one's colliding, but this one up here isn't, then we're at a ledge. And if that's the case, I want you to disable my velocity and I want you to disable my gravity. That way we get stuck on the ledge. So if you see here, I'm just going to block this out here. If I run up to here and jump, you'll see that I get stuck. And that's exactly what we want. So now we, we can hook onto the ledges here. Beautiful. Now, as you'll see here with this code here that I just blocked out, um, it's just changing my position so that I can climb up on here. This is temporary code though. As you'll see, it's gonna be super jarring. And now we're up here. So we need to create like animations to um, allow us to smooth transition. But for right now, this is perfect. This is exactly what we want. So we can pretty much climb any, any way we want um, by just touching the ledge and pressing the jump key. And then down here, um, just saying that um, if the if this if the has ledge isn't true, meaning we're on wall or we're not touching any walls at all, or we're not at some type of ledge, then we're just going to bring back our gravity. That way, um, we fall to the ground. And our velocity is going to automatically reset the second we press a key. So there's no reason to have to reset that or anything like that. So yeah, so now you can mantle. Awesome. Um, now I'm just going to explain why this one is smaller than this one. But the reason why I have it as that, so let's say this is the character here. Oh god, that is that is dreadful. That's uh. <laughs> so let's say this is our character here, and this is his ray, his ray cast. Um, we want to make we want to make sure that um, let's say this is the ledge here that we're pressed up against the wall as close as we can before we try grabbing to the ledge. That way it doesn't look so jarring. So this would be like their hands or whatever. Um, if we had this like wh whoops this way out like this, then we'd we would we would hang from this distance. There would be literally no floor like this even from this distance. So it just looks weird having it close up like that. Just allows you to make it look a little bit cleaner, like so. Okay, that's the only reason why um, this is smaller than that one. Thought I should say, you know, mention that before I go any further. Okay, so before I go any further, um, we need to put a, we need a way to check to see if our character has um, something above their head. Looks like there's a small opening here. So sometimes uh, there might be a small opening and we don't want the player to be able to, as you saw right there, I, I was almost, I was all pretty much able to jump up here and cause some weirdness. So there's something on their head. So let's create um, another variable here. And all that means is can't, we can climb. And we're gonna call this uh, true from default because we should, yes. we should be able to climb from the jump. Okay, and then what we need to do is come in here and then we're just gonna add true. And then we can do all this code down here. 
So essentially what's happening is um, it's going to check if we can mantle first, and then it's going to check if we have a ledge uh, in that order. Now we need to create something that's going to trigger when that happens. So what I need to do is an area 2D, or it's going to be area 3D. And then I need to add another collision shape. And I'm just going to add a cylinder. And then we're going to move that cylinder about here. And it doesn't need to be that big. But whenever this thing here collides with something, we want to make sure that um, Godot knows that uh, we don't want it. What's this? What's this era? Oh, it's non-uniformed. Huh? Oh. I know why. We're supposed to change it in the uh, this thing here. So let's do one. Such a finicky girl. OK. Now, we also need to make sure that we're not colliding in with ourselves. So we're going to go to area, collision shape. And we're just going to change this to another layer. Let me. See. So let's do that. So we'll leave it on layer one, and then we're going to check for layer two. Um, that's what these layers are for, by the way. This just shows this uh, top one is just what layer the object is on, and then the mask is the layer that it's looking for for its collisions. So now I need to add. We're going to check for bodies here. So body enter connect, and we want to be with this one. Yes, and then we're going to do it again when it exits. That way it disables it. Let's uh, make sure that we don't have these stupid errors. I hate them. All right, first one here is um, if something's entered, we know that there's something above our head and we don't want ourselves to mantle. So we're gonna put can mantle equals false. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing down here, except this time it's gonna be true because this one is checking if there's anything uh, this is only gonna trigger when there's nothing above our head. So now if we do this, we shouldn't be able to, to climb up here anymore. As you can see, I can't do it. Okay, so let's fix this jarringness that's here. Um, we're gonna add an animation to it in just a second, but first let's add a tween to this. So let's go here and do this, okay. So the way tweens work is it's a form of interpolation. So all it's doing is taking one value and then it's just slowly counting up to the max value that it can get to. And then um, and then it clamps it out at that, that point. So the way this is gonna work is we're gonna create a tween. So I call this peak for some reason. I'm just gonna call this, okay. So this is going to allow us to create the tween, and then after that, we can use it to um, tweak it. So <clears throat> the way this is going to work is we're going to have um, our tween here. Then we're going to use dot tween property. Whoops. Then it's going to ask for the object that we want to manipulate. In this case, it's going to be self, which is going to be the player object. Then we want to manipulate its position. And then this right here, the next variable is its final result of where it's gonna go. And then this right here, this last bit, is the speed on which it's gonna happen. So let's go, I, don't, I think, I think it will show me, right? Yes, so there you go. You can see here, so it's looking for the object, so self, and after that, it's looking for the path of the uh, the property of the node, which would be its position. It has to be in a string format for whatever freaking reason, and it needs to be spelled correctly. So yeah, and then it's gonna, like I said, it's final value, and then how long. So, and if you do that, now this is still gonna look a bit weird because the camera isn't moving, but we'll no longer instantly teleport on top of this stupid thing. So you'll see here, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. And then boom, lift it up. Do it again. Whee! So yeah, now we can add an animation to this and um, really, really uh, clean it up to make it look a lot better than us kind of just transitioning through that um, through the block. And then we can probably add the the crouching animations as well.